Hi, welcome to Wise Guys. This video is on long division of whole numbers. Okay, so the first page, all I'm doing is reminding you of your times tables. And um, it's a good idea to have them when you're doing work by hand, which is normally what you're doing if you're doing long division, all right? So knowing your times tables is really helpful. And typically you can download them from the internet, all right? <coughs> Excuse me. Another thing that you need to know, because eventually you're, you, if you're doing long division, you're expected to round to particular places. So when we're talking about rounding numbers, we're normally talking about numbers that are less than, less than uh, 1. So we can see that we have our 7 1s here and our 5 tens and and all of the stuff that's above the decimal point. But what we're concerned about are, th are the numbers that are below the decimal point. So when we have this number 93257 decimal 8437, the 8 is in the tenth position and it's tenths. The 4 is in the hundredths position. The three is in the four thousand, or not four thousandths, in the thousandths position. The seven is the ten thousandths. And typically you're not asked to round down in this area, but it is important to know tenth, hundredth, probably thousandths as well. All right. Now, a lot of times when I'm working with students on long division, um, they can't remember how to set this up. Okay. And the way that I remember it is by using words. And there's nothing wrong with just um, taking the time to walk through it and use words. So whenever I'm writing this out, I write it out by using the words. I say 42, oh, pen's losing everything, 42 divided by 7. 42 divided by 7. When I do this, same thing. 42 divided by 7. And when I go to this, it's 42 divided by 7. So that's how I remember. And you may f have a method that works really well for you, and that's perfectly fine. But if you're finding it difficult to come up with a way, let's say we had um, 73 divided by 19. How do we set that up? 73 divided by 19 looks like this. 73 divided by 19. 73 divided by 19. All right. So it just helps to find a way to remember which one, which thing goes into this little house. Okay. All right. So first question, 56 divided by 4. So we've already determined that this is going to look like this, 56 divided by 4, or 56 divided by 4. All right. So the first thing we do is we ask ourselves, how many times does 4 go into 5? So 4 goes into 5 once. So we put the 1 directly above the 5. All right. It's really important that it's there and it's not kind of around somewhere. It has to be directly above the 5. And the reason for that is if you have a really big number that you have to divide and your numbers are not matching up, that's when you can get an error. Now 1 times 4 is 4. So you put the 4 down here, you draw your line, and you put a subtraction sign. Then you subtract. So you subtract the number and you get a 1 here. Right after you subtract, you bring down the next number. So you bring down your 6. Then at that point, once you're done that, those steps, then you say, how many times does 4 go into 16? 4 goes into 16 4 times. And that 4 goes directly above the 6. All right. And that's because we're talking about the 16. So that 6 is down here, and this 4 has to do with that 16. Now 4 times 4 is 16. So 
So the 16 goes under the 16, then we subtract and we get 0. And then we're finished. So the answer to this question, 56 divided by 4, is 14. Okay. Next question. 1404 divided by 27. So remembering 1404 divided by 27. So the first thing we do is we ask ourselves how many times does 27 go into 1? It doesn't. Does 27 go into 14? No. Does 27 go into 140? Uh-huh. Yes, it does. How many times? Well, I'm thinking 140 is kind of like 150. And the reason I'm thinking that is that 27 is close to 30, right? So I'm thinking about the 30 and the 150. Maybe, maybe it's around 5, okay? Don't really know. But the thing is, 140 is kind of low. And the thing about long division as well is that you're working a lot of times with what you don't know. You're just sort of guessing. And it's okay to do that. It's okay to be wrong. First time I did this question, I put a 5 up there, okay? Which is actually incorrect, all right? And that's okay. It's all right to just muck about. So, let's try the 4. <laughs> so we'll put the 4 up here. And the 4 has to go directly above the 0. That's very important, okay? Then you take your 4 and multiply it by the 27. Now you can, if you want, just go over here and do 27 times 4. You could do that piece. But my approach to this is just to say, all right, so 4 goes times... 4 times 7 is 28. So then I put the 8 down here and I put the 2 above the 2, right? 4 times 2 is 8, and then I add the 2, which gives me 10. So now I subtract, I can even just see by looking at it that that is incorrect, right? Because I'm going to get a number, well let's subtract anyway. So we have a 1 here, and that's a 2. This is a 3, so that gives me 32. Now, this is, this is a, a nice piece of information. When we get this answer, and that answer is greater than this answer, that tells us that we're wrong, okay? Because this answer here, when we subtract, when we subtract and get this answer, it must be less than the 27, all right? So let's just try again. So we have 27. And again, all this is is information. That's sort of what it's like when you're doing long division. You're sort of you're just trying stuff. So we can see the 4 isn't OK. Let's try a 5. Right? So then we say, all right, so 5 times 27. Here's our 27 and our 5. That's a 5. Carry the 3. <coughs> Excuse me. We end up with 135. All right. So 5 times 27 is 135. Now at this point, you write down your 135, you put a subtraction sign there, you put your line, and you subtract. So 140 minus 135 is 5. As soon as you subtract, you bring down the next number. Okay. So you bring down the next number, and that's a 54. Or I'm sorry, that's a 4. And that gives us 54. Now what we do is we say, how many times does 27 go into 54? 27 goes into 54 twice. So then we put the 2 directly above the 4. Okay, so there's the 2. 2 times um, 7 is 14. So the 4 goes there. We put the 1 above the 2. 2 times 2 is 4. We add the 1, and that gives us 5. 
and we subtract and we get a zero. So then that tells us we're finished. We have no remainders, so we're done. So then the answer to this question is 52. Okay. And that video has been brought to you by Wise Guys. I hope you have a super day. Take care of yourself.